Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. My name is Gary and on this video we are going to be taking a look at how to drill large holes in thick steel. We've got some one inch thick by four inches wide flat stock that we've cut up into to small pieces and we're using that as, as part of another project as you can see here and if you're watching this sometime in the future I'll link a video to the to the project that this actually is being built for but the focus of this video is to kind of walk you through three different methods to get a large hole punched through uh, thick steel. So we're gonna take a look at an annular cutter, we're gonna take a look at a one and a half inch or one and five eighths inch twist drill, and then we're gonna look take a look at using a regular hole saw. And we're gonna time each one of them and uh, try to keep it as fair as possible. And you'll see the length of time, the process used to, that we're gonna do this. So let's take a look and get started. All right, so first up here, we're gonna use uh, this annular cutter. And uh, this is the package that it came in. I got this off eBay. I've had it for a couple of years. Um, it's been used a few times, I'd say maybe half a dozen times, but it's still really sharp and in good shape. And these things will last a long, long time. So uh, I think it could be considered to be, you know, fresh tool or sharpened tool, whatever. But so we'll go ahead and get this chucked up and start the timer and come back at the end and kind of give you a summary of what worked good, what doesn't work good and go from there. All right, you saw we had no problem at all pushing that through uh, in one pass. Just uh, plunged it right through there. Uh, the one thing you'll notice is I use plenty of lubrication, you know, just keep dabbing the oil in there. Don't want to run anything dry. But the one of the downsides is just this nasty swarf that comes off of it. And sometimes you have to stop and clean it out, you know, because it just gets all tangled around it. A lot of times it'll, it'll kind of self-evacuate. Um, but, uh, and then it leaves this slug at the end here. So, you know, you're not turning the hole in completely into chips. You're uh, producing this slug that, yeah, you saw the timer there a minute and 52 seconds uh, to get that through there, which is pretty good. And, you know, really I could have uh, plunged it a little faster. Um, you know, I was trying to be gentle on the tool, but also, you know, be productive and get it through there. So, all right, we'll take a look at the next tool.
All right, well, you saw we had no problem using this method. Um, in fact, for some reason, I kind of like using this method. Some people will say, well, you don't need to run that many different drills through it. Uh, you might get away with just running the three quarter or maybe start with a half inch, uh, you know, plunge a half inch hole through and then step up to the one and a half. Um, I don't know, I, I just like, I feel like it's easier on your tooling to step up more progressively. You saw there that that took the longest amount of time at seven minute and one second. The chips that it produces are really easy to work with. They they pop out of there. You can vacuum them up easy with a shop vac compared to the swarf that this thing leaves. You know, it, it just is a lot easier cleanup. So the downside is making all the changes, you know, between each of the tooling, having to re-chuck everything up. That's what's costing you the, the extra time here. So, all right, we'll uh, step to the next one. All right, well, as you saw, we were able to get that push through there. And um, I, I think that, you know, you definitely need to take a lot of cuts with this, meaning you can't push as hard with uh, that you could with a twist drill or annular cutter. And to start with, I was, I was pushing a little bit too hard on it. And you can see the slug that it produced there. You can see that the timing, uh, six, the six minutes roughly it took to get it through a little bit faster than the twist drill method, but not near as fast as annual cut, annular cutter. And, but the main issue with this is that there's no chip evacuation and you, you can see this little fine chip that it produces and what it ends up doing is just sort of, you know, regrinding its own chips in there. So you have to kind of pull out, blow it out with the air, especially as, the, as you get down in there deeper. If you see the annular cutter has the flutes on it that allows, you know, for the, that swarf to evacuate out of there and makes it much more effective. And you can also see on the teeth, just the thickness of it. But it worked, you know, if you're doing this at home, I would I would say that the main issue that you run into trying to put thick metal, big holes through thick metal at home with a hole saw is just to be able to turn your drill slow enough. You know, you, you need 200 RPM for something like that. And most of your conventional drill presses that you buy, Home Depot Lowe's, those are made for woodworking and probably have a minimum of 800 RPM, you know, and I think Mr. Pete had a video on doing a, a VFD conversion on a regular drill press so you can lower the RPMs, but my experience with VFDs on machines 
is that when you try to use it to get a really low RPM out of it, you lose all the torque with it. And what you really need with this is the torque. So also Chucky2009 did a video that he got a Powermatic drill press from the Texas gun guy and did a restoration on it. And it had variable speed all the way down to super low RPMs and you know worked extremely well. So I think picking up something like that for a thousand bucks or something in that range you know was a good option over spending four or five thousand for a mill so uh yeah so that's it you saw the three methods there just wanted to to share this video with you guys 